Thank you very much for that uh, nice and overwhelming uh, introduction. I'm delighted to be here, delighted to be your first speaker at this year's uh, conference. And uh, you can see my screen okay? Perfect. Um, so I'm here to tell you about the world's fastest growing brain disease is Parkinson's. And I'm going to argue to you uh, that this disease is largely man-made. So I'll say that again, that the world's fastest growing brain disease is largely a product of human behavior, not exclusively, but largely a product of human behavior to the extent that this is a man-made disease. It can be a human ended one and can be a preventable uh, condition. So I'm gonna to talk to you about the age of degenerative and man-made diseases in which we live. Uh, talk to you then about the rise of Parkinson's disease and then conclude with some ideas about how we can end the disease and some actions you can take right now, today, uh, to help bring about the end of this uh, debilitating and deadly disease. So uh, French American environmental, science, environmental scientist René Dubose wrote, every civilization has its own kind of pestilence and can control it only by reforming itself. Put into modern English, every society creates its own diseases. And one of these diseases is likely Parkinson's. A really smart epidemiologist, Abdul Omran in 1971, uh, published this article uh, in which he was trying to under better understand what leads to the growth of human populations over time. And he divided, uh, and he and his, uh, subsequent colleagues uh, divided stages of epidemiology study of diseases into four main periods of humanity. First is that uh, early humans from say 200,000 years ago until the uh, agrarian revolution largely died of pestilence, infectious diseases and famine. There quite simply wasn't enough food to be had and that uh, limited the ability for populations to grow. But sometime around 10,000 years ago with the uh, agricultural revolution, we were able to first uh, produce large amounts of food, store that food, and then form cities or communities uh, which enabled populations to grow. The big things that led to uh, death in those days were infectious diseases. So think about the bubonic plague from the 1400s, think about smallpox, uh, and think about uh, the influenza pandemic of 1918. And then he says, we now live in the age of degenerative and man-made diseases. Um, and that's what we're gonna devote a lot of time to discussing. Other people have extended this analogy and said that in the future, we're gonna uh, die of delayed degenerative diseases and emerging infections, infections born out of hubris. Um, and we can think about some of those. Uh, but I'm gonna to talk to you about this degenerative and man-made diseases. So what do we mean by man-made? Um, so lung cancer really is like the poster child for man-made diseases. There are lots of others and we'll give you some other examples. But if you look at this graph and you look at the number of lung cancer deaths in the United States in black, and you look uh, at 1900, there were simply almost no lung cancer deaths in the United States in 1900. hundred years ago, lung cancer just didn't exist. Um, before the advent of cigarettes, doctors took special notice when confronted with a case, thinking in a once in a lifetime oddity. They thought that they would all gather around, they'd tell the students to come by because they thought they would never see a case. Unfortunately, with the introduction of cigarettes, um, we saw a rise in the number of deaths due to lung cancer first in England, then the United States. And you can see almost a perfect correlation with a 25 year lag between the number of cigarette smokes, cigarettes smoked and the rise in lung cancer deaths. And lung cancer, because of great public health initiatives in the 1970s, uh, peaked. And uh, subsequently, we've had a decline in smoking. And 25 years after we've had a decline in smoking, we've had a decline in lung cancer deaths. Lung cancer is far from the only man-made disease. You can think about automobile accidents, uh, for example, which are one of the top 10 leading causes of death and kind of odd, it's leading cause of death for young adults. Um, but there are many other diseases that are uh, potentially man-made. Uh, this was a study too about acne, which affects, I think, somewhere between 50 to 75% of uh, teenagers and young mates. But uh, these uh, authors argued that this is a disease of Western civilization. They looked at hunter-gatherer populations in Papua New Guinea and in Paraguay. And they looked at 1,200 of these individuals for acne and found none, not one. And they looked at 100 uh, some individuals from Paraguay, a hunter-gatherer community there, 
and again looked for acne and found none, not even in teenagers. Um, this is from Street Journal. Um, Stopping a pandemic deadlier than COVID by the former uh, head of the CDC, Dr. Tom. And he's talking about uh, cardiovascular disease. I'm just going to read you the opening uh, paragraphs from the opening paragraph of his paper, again, from the last week's Wall Street Journal. Although COVID is the most visible pandemic of our lifetime, it is neither the deadliest nor the most preventable. That distinction goes to cardiovascular disease, a pandemic so common is in this lethal, it seems normal so ingrained in the fabric of modern society, it seems natural. And he's arguing that cardiovascular, and I'm gonna to argue to you that Parkinson's disease, the vast majority of Parkinson's disease is not natural. This is not something dictated by our genes. There are some genetic factors that account for maybe 15 to 20% of people with Parkinson's disease, but the overwhelming majority of people with Parkinson's disease have no identifiable genetic years and millions of dollars being spent evaluating the genetic causes. The vast majority of Parkinson's disease is due to environmental causes. We've known this for over, yet we have failed uh, to act.